I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research, and I still wouldn't look at this one without embarrassment. But every time I glanced at it, there was something unresolved. And Hello and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. I'm going to start off this final series of videos with a confession. This video troubles me. These series of YouTube videos that I'm making are a hobby for me. It's not something that I really wanted to put a lot of myself out about. It's not about me, it's about the content of the video. This video is different. The parish records say that I was baptized Episcopal, but I'm a non-practitioner. The fact that I don't attend church every Sunday does not mean that I do not look at the possibility of a supreme being with wonderment. It also doesn't mean that I don't live my life by the golden rule and the concept of pay it forward. In short, it means that I start every day with the hope that I can be the man my dog thinks I am. That is why this video disturbs me. I would encourage people that are devout and of faith to make comments on this video. I'm specifically asking for your input on the ideas Mark is putting forth here. So let's cue up the music and get started. Flat Earth Clues, Part 11, Souls in the System. This is part of a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the Flat Earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. This clue looks into the recent past, or more specifically, an odd but interesting piece of conspiracy lore. What I hope to show here is an example of how an enclosed system once revealed, can change the world very quickly and in ways you may not have realized. To start, we need to go back a little ways to a controversial 2004 documentary called Astronauts Gone Wild. For those of you who missed this strange little gem, the summary is this. The producer-director Bart Winfield Sibrel went out to prove that all the moon landings were elaborate hoaxes. To do this, he set up interviews with the Apollo astronauts, giving them the impression that the interview was just routine. He then produced a Bible and asked each of the astronauts to swear on the book before the interview started. The interview was then supposed to be a series of detailed technical questions designed to trip up the astronauts. During the process, there was quite a bit of tension and some very uncomfortable moments, including one actual fist fight. Well, actually, most of that isn't really true, uh, with one exception. Buzz Aldrin did clock this guy. Now, I'm not recommending that anyone actually go out and watch this hour-long documentary. For me, the astronauts have had to live with this guilt a long time, and Leaving them alone seems like the humane thing to do. It's probably a good idea for another reason. Old Buzz here will kick your butt, and quite frankly, I don't think a jury would convict him of it. What interested me, and moreover, what piqued my interest then, wasn't the unoriginal questions the reporter posed, but how the astronauts reacted to the Bible itself. Well, here's the wiki page about that. Actually, most of these astronauts did not have arranged interviews with this guy. He confronted them in public places at public appearances and shoved a Bible in their face demanding they swear they went to the moon. Honestly, if you confronted me while I was having dinner with my wife or seeing patients in my office and demanded I swear on a Bible my name was Bob, I think I'd be a little taken aback too. None of the Apollo pilots would put their hand on it and swear that they went to the moon. In fact, most treated the book like it was made of plutonium. This puzzled me for years because it went against the basic rules of any cover-up, one of which is lie about everything. Now, the pilots of the Apollo program had done many interviews over the years, many televised and had been going through their song and dance without really any instances of contention. So why not just go through the motions again? It is, after all, 
just a book, right? Again, let me repeat what I just said. Most of these interviews, if you want to call them that, were ambushes of these gentlemen, who are quite elderly by now, in public places while they were doing other things. The guy ran up to them, shoved a Bible in their face, and said, swear on this book that you went to the moon. Well, quite frankly, most of them just were kind of taken aback by that, I would assume or try to extract themselves from the situation with this individual. The bottom line is, I don't think that it was the Bible that these people treated like plutonium. It was the person holding the Bible. In all honesty, I don't blame them. People lie under oath all the time. It's called perjury. And every country has an extensive system of laws and punishments to deal with it. These punishments don't seem to stop the people from committing perjury, and you can read about it almost every day. Furthermore, the astronauts were not in court. This was just a room, sometimes their own home. You know, Mark, I'm glad you brought that up, because Edgar Mitchell, who was the lunar module pilot for Apollo 14, said this on that wiki page, that this guy had presented himself at his home with fake History Channel credentials. Being an officer, a gentleman, and a former public figure, he let him in and conducted an interview. Well, he pulled the Bible stunt on him, uh, and his deception was brought out, and he was invited to leave his home. Although there uh, is a physical confrontation alluded to here, I think that's more metaphorical. Because I do recall when Battle and Buzz landed a right overhead on him, that made the news. Home. So swearing on the book f would, for all intents and purposes, be meaningless. I think that it is important to note that Buzz Aldrin took communion on the moon. Despite what Mark is alluding to, Buzz Aldrin was not only a scientist, an engineer, and an astronaut, he was a deeply religious man and still is. And this sat in the back of my head for years, because it didn't make sense. Why would astronauts, trained by a very large military science program, be afraid of just putting their hand on the book and just tell one more lie? Well, for them, it may have been more than just a book. It may have been a symbol of something much bigger. Quick check. This guy confronts you in the mall and demands you swear in a Bible that you're a homo sapien. What do you do? You see, for you, me, and almost everyone else, a holy book is a symbol of faith, because the creator or creators have yet to be revealed. But if you knew that the creators were real, then the book becomes something much more tangible, more relevant, more sobering. At the beginning, I told you all that I was disturbed by this video. And specifically, I asked for the viewers that had strong faith to chime in and give me some input. This is what's bothering me. The difference between science and faith is faith does not require evidence, whereas science does. I don't have a problem with people having faith, and I understand that they don't require evidence for it, and I don't fault them for that. But what Mark is asserting here is that there apparently are two types of faith. There's the type of faith that you have in the unknown, and then you have a different type of faith that you have when you are confronted with confirmation of your fears, so to say. So, if I'm correct in what I'm hearing, if you are just simply having faith on something that's unknown, it's okay to violate that faith if it's convenient to you. Uh, you want to lie in court, for example, or you want to rob a bank. However, if you know that that deity or higher being is there watching you, then you can't do it anymore because you're going to get caught. You know, you joke a little bit about it's only illegal if you get caught or if the cop sees it. Okay, that's fine for running a stoplight. Let me ask you this. If you could steal money from your company in large quantities and not get caught, would that make it okay since nobody saw it? How about killing your ex? If you could get away with it, would that be all right? 
Would it be somewhat different if somebody was watching you do it? Now, in my personal opinion, if you have true faith, you devote yourself to a, a code of conduct, an, an ideal or a, you know, a social code that goes along with that faith. You follow that code not because somebody's watching you, but because you're watching you. You know whether or not you're following the code. So what difference would it be if somebody else saw you following the code or not following the code? Would it be any different? I'd be very interested in hearing from the religiously devout that are watching this video. Does it matter to you if somebody's watching? Is there a difference in your faith? Or more to the point, the Apollo astronauts would have been let in on the enclosed system during their tenure with NASA, and over the decades, this system created certain truths for these men, one of which is, someone could be watching. Now, whether the builders slash creators are actually watching every little thing we do can be debated, but if you have proof that they are real, then the thought of your every move being scrutinized is a very real possibility. This is what you and I may suspect, but don't feel. The Apollo pilots, however, are a different story. If they were shown how the world really looked, then their attitude towards the book takes on a whole new meaning. In fact, it didn't have to even be a Bible. It could have been an encyclopedia or a piece of wood, because it was the idea that made them pause. And if you're still not getting it, then I'll ask you directly. If you actually saw some of the Creator's handiwork, and knew that there was a chance you were being watched, and there was a scorecard involved, would you swear against that and lie about something? You know, I guess here's part two of my question. Do you need to see a piece of the dome to see God's handiwork? Do you see God's handiwork in the smile of a baby? If you have a strong belief in God, how far do you need to look to see evidence of his handiwork? Would you roll those dice and take the chance? Or to put it another way, Everyone has gotten frustrated about something, then looked up and cursed the sky. Would you still do that if you knew that a creator was up there and possibly listening? I just want to toss this out here real quick. Go ahead and answer it in the comments if you want. How many people out there think Mark is using religion and faith and God to promote his narrative of the Flat Earth and boost his YouTube channel. How many of you think this is false and Mark simply being a hypocrite here? That's just one example of how knowledge of the enclosed system changes people. The astronauts didn't want to roll the dice and lie because there was a real fear of retribution. And while they were confident that a bolt of lightning wasn't going to strike them down, they also weren't going to push their luck. Well, cool story, bro, but I think you've got a little bit of a leap of logic going on here. You've turned proof of some older gentlemen recoiling from somebody shoving a Bible in their face and demanding they swear something to they have proof of God Almighty himself or herself that they're hiding from the public. I think you're going to have to present a little bit more evidence connecting the two. And we all take on the same approach in daily life. Everyone who drives has run a stoplight. We know when we see the yellow light that it's too far away, so we hit the gas and hope for the best, especially if the traffic is light and we aren't putting anyone in danger. But you take that very same intersection and put a red light camera on it, well, then things change, don't they? Do you hit the gas and roll the dice? Not a chance. You hit the brakes and hope that you can stop in time because you are being watched. You may not be a model driver by any sense of the word, but you understand this rule and this place and you don't break it. 
Yet even a quick search on Google shows there are plenty of attorneys that will fight your red light ticket. I take it to mean that that means that people still do it. And this one aspect is why I'm pushing so hard to see the enclosed system revealed. Because as a civilization, we seem to be only as good as what we can get away with. This isn't an issue with freedom, it's an issue with doing the right thing. You know that running red lights is a bad idea. The camera is a reminder of that. Imagine all the things that would change for the better if the enclosed system was revealed. Would you lie to hurt someone? Would you rob a bank, commit fraud, or embezzle? Would you steal anything unless your life depended on it? Shoot, would you have premarital sex? Or smoke marijuana? Or break any law, spit on the sidewalk? I know you're going to say it, so I'm going to beat you to the punch. If we just admit the flat earth, everything will be perfect. Unless, of course, you're a judge or a police officer or a correction officer, because you'll just be out of a job. Nobody will need you anymore. But look on the bright side. Maybe you can retrain as a kitten groomer. And while people would still get angry and fight, would they maim each other? Would they kill? Would anyone knowingly commit murder? Would you bully or extort people for profit? In fact, knowing that the world was created, would you do anything malicious towards anyone? If the world is not a globe, but instead enclosed, then wars end. Hate crimes end. Maybe not overnight, but quickly. Because you may be, for the first time in your life, actually accountable for your actions. Well, you're maybe on to something there, Mark. It's not like we hold people accountable in a globe Earth right now. I mean, shoot, you can do pretty much whatever you want without any fear of consequences, because you know that, you know, hey, there's no dome over our heads and evidence of a creator. Works for me. You realize now that you are a very real soul in this enclosed system, and you have a responsibility towards your fellow man, one that can be boiled down into one simple rule. Treat others better than you treat yourself. Yes, Mark, if we just admit to the flat earth, everything will be wonderful. Just remember, Mark, follow, 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 follow the yellow brick road. This, this is why it's so important to show the world as it really is. This is why I am asking the authority itself to open the door and let this secret come through. Hey, Mark, you wouldn't happen to have an email address for that, would you? You've kept this hidden for too long, and the people who live here with you have been through enough. This isn't about money or power anymore. It's about our very souls, the essence of who we are. Wealth and titles don't define your heart. Hiding the entire world may have seemed like a good idea at the time, but we have gone way beyond that. Have you actually seen our home recently? This needs to be fixed, and it needs to be now. The people won't forget the deception, but they will forgive you for it, because a truth like this will make them more noble, something we should have been since the beginning. Mark, you're right. Wealth and titles do not define your heart. The fact you believe that you have to be watched to do the right thing defines your heart, Mark. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. I think the comments on this video are going to be interesting. Thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Fill my brain getting real sore.